Why didn't anyone tell me RBH was such a serious contender? Their subwoofers were incredible. So were their speakers. I gave these guys my business card and I hope to be able to review some of their gear. Here we have fine audio in the upscale audio room. It's going to be paired with a behemoth of a Pathos amplifier. These amplifiers are made in Italy. You're going to start seeing some Pathos reviews on my channel. These amps have been impressing the hell out of me. One's coming up next week. It's going to be the Class AB Tube Hybrid. This is going to be the Kimber Cable Room, and you're going to see some Zoo Audio speakers. I talked to Sean from Zoo Audio, super stand-up guy, very down-to-earth. Hope to be able to check out those bookshelf speakers in the near future. Mon Acoustics, you guys already know, I put my money where my mouth is with these speakers. I bought the Supermon Minis, and I bought the Platamons after the review. Here you can see the added bass module for the Platamon. We'll see what happens with that. Uh, down here, you can see the Orchard Audio new power amplifiers. Those are mono blocks. Might check those out. Back to the base module. Again, I'll probably review it. Not sure if I'll buy it because I'm more of a bookshelf speaker guy, but we'll see. Perlison bookshelf speakers. This is, of course, going to be the Fidelity Imports room. These guys came out huge. Speaking of huge, look at that Perlison sub. Fidelity Imports had, it, it seemed like eight maybe seven rooms at the show. Like I said, they came out big. You're going to see their name pop up a few more times in this video. Next level hi-fi. These are the Borison speakers. A lot of you guys have been asking me about. I gave them my business card. I told them, guys, the subscribers are asking to see these. Let me get a review sample. We will see what happens. This is the SPL room. Wait till I zoom in on this equipment rack and you'll understand why I wanted to put it on camera and show you guys. It's super stylized, unique look with the red front fascias. I thought it looked really nice and I thought some of you guys might agree. So there you go. Again, the next level room. Here we have the Borison Towers. I did not ask for a review sample of these because you guys know I don't review towers. Plus, these things are not cheap by any means and I try to keep things reasonable on this channel. These are little class A monoblocks. I've never seen class A monoblocks be so small and I was like we've got to put these on camera. I'm not sure what the brand is but they looked super unique. Okay so you know look if uh, Dr. Seuss designed a speaker we might end up with something like this. The aesthetics definitely aren't for me, neither is the price tag. This is esoteric stuff, super expensive, not for the faint of heart. Bob Carver amplifier, one of the greatest in the industry, legend. If I see his name on a product, I'm pulling out my camera. We're going to film it. We're going to give Bob Carver some airtime because the man deserves it. This is a speaker that I just felt was unique. Uh, this is their tower model. They had an example of their bookshelf as well. And I, at some point, I just felt like, you know what? Let's get some of this unique stuff on camera for people looking for something more stylized. Axis Audio. These are the guys that sent me the review sample of the Franco Serblin Accordo bookshelf speaker. Incredibly beautiful. Their rooms are always set up nicely. Look at that turntable. That thing was just mesmerizing to look at. Um, their rooms are always nice, set up well, and sound fantastic. This is another of the Access Audio rooms. I mean, look at the equipment rack. Look at those room acoustics. Uh, I'm, I don't know if that's diffusion. I mean, it's definitely not absorption, but I digress. Magico, you all know, not inexpensive by any means not for the faint of heart. It's big, it's expensive, and it's heavy, so you better have the room and the budget to run it. Mostly an analytical sound, all about clarity, and they do it well. This speaker was crazy, guys. If this thing was more affordable, I'd have it in for review. I'm pretty sure the price was well north of $20,000. The company's Perfect 8. You can see each tower has a bunch of dual opposed 8 inch drivers. It sounded like there was a pair of 15 inch subwoofers in the room. There was so much bass coming out of them. This was a unique speaker and sub combo. Both cabinets are made entirely out of metal. The speakers come with their dedicated stands. 
I thought they looked pretty good and the price wasn't too wild. I want to say the speakers were in the threes. I'm going to try to get a review sample simply for the unique look and big sound stage that they were laying down in the room. All right. This is another esoteric speaker. This thing is massive. It is expensive and each one probably weighs five, 600 pounds. My home could never accommodate something like that. Uh, back down to earth. This is a smaller tower. This is a dipole design. This is still fairly high end and expensive, but the build quality was just impeccable when I started getting up close and looking at this speaker. Now, if you want a speaker that doesn't look like a speaker, that has multiple finish options that you can make just fit in your home decor any way you like, here you go. This was super unique. Um, it's not cheap, uh, but if you're looking for something different, here you go. Another high-end brand, MBL. We all know about them. Their stuff looks absolutely beautiful. Um, some of their stuff also apprises the average down payment for a house. But if you got it, I don't blame you. Look at those power amplifiers. Absolutely gorgeous. ATC. Guys, every ATC speaker on display was a powered speaker's. I didn't know this. Did you guys know this? Every single ATC powered speaker is analog, no DAC, no DSP. It's just class AB amplifiers inside driving the tweeter and the bass driver. And that's why their powered speakers sound so incredible. Look at this driver. That's out of the ATC SCM11. The motor section is absolutely massive. No wonder the thing was so controlled. This is a three-way. So you've got three class a b amplifiers in each one of those totaling 350 watts rms again no dac no dsp no digital full analog design yg acoustics here um, this is going to be for someone who likes the platamon with its base module but you got 10 times the budget and you want yg acoustics instead of mon acoustics for one reason or another um, they do look beautiful i gotta give them that this was a bit of a unique room, and at some point during my filming, I just thought, you know what, let's start capturing some of these speakers that have slightly different designs. It's going to be polarizing. Some of you might not like the look, and speaking of polarizing, here's another one, Linkwitz. This is, again, a different design aesthetically. Personally, it's not for me, but I know there's guys out there that are going to absolutely love this kind of unique stuff. Uh, YG Acoustics with Vinnie Rossi Electronics. I didn't know Vinnie Rossi had electronics, but they obviously do, so here you go. Uh, magical speakers in the Krell room with the Krell power amplifiers. You all know what Krell is. Power amplifiers, massive, heavy. They're not playing around. These are triode uh, tube amplifiers, and these were some of the best-looking tube amplifiers I'd seen. They looked incredible. I had to get them on camera and show you guys. I'm not sure what the price is. I wish I would have asked because they look phenomenal. SVS showed up, guys. They brought out their biggest new tower paired with Emotiva Electronics. Love to see it. SVS doesn't need super high-end or super expensive amps to show off how good their speakers are. These speakers were putting out tremendous bass and tremendous clarity to match. I can't wait to get a review sample of one of the smaller bookshelf speakers, and these looked incredible in person. PMC transmission line, you can see by the cutaway. That's a unique thing that they do. Um, it looks great. I've never heard this stuff in my room. I'd love to check it out one day, but there's a lot of stuff out there, and yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens, you know. All right, listen, if you've got a really homey, uh, earthy vibe going on in your room, you want it to look like a treehouse, here you go. This was such a strange design. I've never seen anything like this. It's like woofers in a tree, you know. Um, this is that same room that I said was kind of unique and different. Um, this is their larger model, obviously a fuller sound. The look is polarizing. It wasn't for me, but again, I feel like some of you guys like this unique look, so I didn't want to avoid it. Anyways, 
My blue sound node is on its last leg. I need a new streamer, so I'm going to try to get my eyes on Inuus or my ears, I should say. The guys were super cool, so maybe you'll see an Inuus uh, review soon on the streamer. Um, I'd love to check one out. Yamaha, these guys got amplifiers at almost every price category. They've got so many models. I've only ever reviewed the RS202 and it was great for less than $200. I am curious what their more expensive models do. I didn't know Yamaha was still doing speakers. Those little bookshelf speakers got my attention until I found out they were $3,000 a pair. I don't know why, but I was expecting Yamaha to give us something a little more affordable, but who knows, maybe they sound incredible. I'll try to get a review sample so we could find out, but Yamaha's a giant company, no promises. Audio note, um, I filmed this because look at this little power amplifier, this little mono block. I just love the form factor. They were so small, they looked great. The room sounded pretty good also. Klipsch in the building, an American classic. You see Klipsch at a trade show, you're gonna stop, you're gonna listen to it, you're gonna enjoy that massive and effortlessness and that sense of scale that's coming out of those behemoths. Dart Zeal, not for the faint of heart, kind of got that Iron Man vibe going. These things are super expensive, absolutely esoteric. Let's bring it back down to earth. Gashelli Labs, guys, every single room Gashelli Labs had sounded phenomenal. Gino knows how to set up a room. I got to talking with him, the guy is super down to earth. I wish him tremendously more success. I mean, the guy's so cool. Look at these little acrylic cases he's got for his components. I'm just gonna shut up unless you guys appreciate this beauty. This is another one of the Gishelli rooms. We had some speakers here with birch cabinets and there was a lot of bass coming out of these speakers. They're Neil Blanchard designs. I'm not sure what they cost, but I'd like to check out a pair of one of the smaller ones. I liked what I was hearing. Okay, listen, you got a wife and she wants a speaker that doesn't look like a speaker. Wait for this. You see, you see this thing that looks like a desk? Nope, that's a speaker. And what if I told you it had stereo imaging, it had a big sound stage and a good sense of depth? I couldn't believe what I was hearing. They got smaller models too, if you just need that maximum wife acceptance factor. Um, that was a Fidelity Imports product, as is the Q Acoustic stuff. These guys are master distributor for a lot of brands. As I pan to the left, you're gonna see a ton of more Q Acoustic speakers. Guys, the cabinet quality you get from Q Acoustics, really, really good for the money. Fidelity Imports again. I told you guys Fidelity Imports came out big for the show. They had a ton of rooms and every single one of their rooms sounded very good. These guys know what they're doing and uh, just, uh, I, I can't say enough praise about them. I mean, I think they had seven or eight rooms, guys. I'm not sure what this is. If my memory is correct, I saw a lot of rooms. I think that's a PMC speaker. The electronics, I'm not too sure of, but this room had a lot of sound power coming out of it, and no surprise, the speakers are absolutely on the larger side. Harmonia distribution or upscale audio. Uh, again, fine audio speakers, guys. If you've never seen fine audio speakers in person, the craftsmanship is incredible. If you like a good wood finish, they're one of the best. I don't know how to say this brand, perhaps Cabase Audio. Uh, I'd love to get my hands on a pair of these speakers and check them out. They're small and they sound massive. I'm not sure why I haven't reviewed them yet. Maybe they're more expensive than I thought. I'll try to check them out. TAD, amazing speaker. You'll never see me review it for one simple reason, guys. It is super expensive, guys. Their cheapest speaker is $20,000. I don't think you're going to see Nemo propaganda review and stuff that esoteric. Um, if you have the budget for it, more power to you, but it's just a little bit outside of my comfort zone. Speaking of their 20K speaker, that's it right there on the left. 
Um, this was a room of components, and the guy had TAD speakers showing off his components. The synergy was pretty good. The room sounded fantastic, I gotta admit. Perlison speakers, heard them in this room. Fidelity imports again. I told you guys they came out big. Um, Perlison, it's easy to understand why so many people love their gear once you hear it. Um, this sounds incredible. It's big, it's powerful, it's effortless. Grand note, um, this room was not messing around. Wait till you see this amplifier at the bottom. It's a behemoth. And the grand note speakers they had it paired to, man, these guys were not afraid to turn up the volume. And it sounded massive, powerful, tight, organic. This room was an absolute powerhouse. Um, all right. I'll be honest, guys, I don't know what any of this equipment is, um, but I thought these amps looked great. I don't know if they're all amps or components, I suppose, but they looked nice, and I wanted to show them off. Uh, not every brand was showing off like what the name of everything was, so it was a little bit difficult to know um, what some of the more obscure gear was. This company is out of Singapore. It looked like they had Jolita and another company called Liu Kang Hi-Fi. And if you've ever played Mortal Kombat, you're going to think that's an awesome name for a hi-fi company just like I did. I mean, look, Liu Kang Audio, you can see I'm not, I'm not joking, guys. The two people there were super down to earth. We exchanged business cards, might review some of their products in the future. Those little speakers, really full confident sound, a lot of clarity. This, okay, <laughs> this speaker was interesting. We got a little SVS sub. Look at this speaker, though. It's just a little line array of tweeters. Look how tall it is. It just keeps going. This was the weirdest speaker I had seen at the show. Uh, I just wanted to share it with you guys. All right, Franco Serblin. Um, beautiful speakers, handmade in Italy. You got the tower on the left, the bookshelf on the right, the Accordo. I did review that uh, about maybe six months ago now handcrafted perfection beautiful sound not cheap but if you've got deep pockets definitely check out the accordo it is just stunningly beautiful looking and sounding this is the rotel mishi room i thought this stuff was way more expensive but i was talking to the rep and he was telling me the prices and i was like oh okay this is in my wheelhouse i'd love to review some of it I don't know if it'll actually happen. Uh, I hope it does, though. We'll see. And this is the last vid. Guys, I just leave me in the comments. Let me know. Would you buy a speaker with a dragon blast set on the side? Tune in tomorrow for part two where we cover the rest of the rooms. Thank you for checking this out.